my side. Do you want to stand down? I think I'll be on the side. Let you be closer. Oh my god, I memorized everything and now I. Did no, you really memorize it? I was like, <laughs> I'm still going to be reading. No, I'm going to do a little. I'm going to try to do a little bit of. I'm just waiting for everybody to sit down. Yeah, there's still some people at the back floor. Okay. Just so you know. Can everyone hear me all right? Does that sound good? <clears throat> okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 28th Wallfellows Induction Ceremony. Thank you all for coming. I'm Raleigh Cook from the Wallfellows Class of 2023. And I'm Nicholas Urbanic, also of the Wallfellows Class of 2023. Tonight, we will formally induct the 28th class into our family, the Class of 2024. The Wall Fellows Program was founded by E. Craig Wall Jr. with the mission to prepare students not for their first job, but for their last job. So thank you to everyone who has supported this program and the students throughout the years. We look forward to many more years of excellence to come. Before we begin tonight, we would ask the following people, please stand to be recognized by the attendees. We ask that we please hold your applause till the end. President Michael T. Benson, Provost Dan Ennis, Dean Erica Small, Dean Claudia Bornholt, Director of the Wall Fellows Program, Jay Page, Members of the Wall Fellows Board of Advisors, Wall Fellows Faculty Committee. The success and growth of this program has been built with the help of many, and we would like this to take this time to thank you for your dedication, support, stewardship, and engagement. We are honored to be joined tonight by President Michael T. Benson, and would like to invite him to the stage at this time to provide some opening remarks as we begin tonight's ceremony. Well, good evening. I looked at the program, and uh, these will be brief because we've got a full night. So uh, I'll apologize at the outset that I have to excuse myself because we have our third of three Hall of Fame induction ceremonies tonight down at the Grand Dunes. So I've got to buzz down there and speak as well. So um, if you have any questions, just ask Dan Ennis at the end of the program. Uh, we are so delighted to welcome you all here. We were here just a few hours ago for breakfast. Valerie Coleman, the renowned flautist and composer, is on campus uh, for this, this week. And the space reminded me again that we, we hold so many important events here, uh, but none of which is more important than this one. I've been in higher education for 30 years, and I have never seen a program like the Wall Fellows Program. So I want to commend all you students particularly that are part of it. I hope as you get a little more distance between your experience here at, at the university and you get into the world and have other experiences, you'll reflect on what a unique and transformative program this is. And you'll never take it for granted. One thing I certainly don't want us to take for granted is the fact that today is Veterans Day. And I want to thank particularly all those men and women who have worn the uniform, the families that have supported them, and what it means on a day like today to reflect on uh, their service. A favorite quote of mine is from Adelaide Stevenson. True patriotism is not manifested in short, frenzied bursts of emotion. It is the tranquil, steady dedication of a lifetime. So we have different moments to reflect and thank 
Uh, certainly Veterans Day is one of them, but I certainly hope throughout all the 365 days of the year we, uh, we commend and we thank and we recognize uh, our ser servicemen and women. I had a chance just a few days ago to speak to a group about some principles of leadership. It was the Myrtle Beach um, kind of senior management team. And I went back and looked at some notes uh, that I've used on other occasions and found a, a quote of, of George Washington Carver, who's a favorite of mine, uh, who if I, if, I don't have time tonight to go into his background, but read up about him uh, and where he started his life path, the profound impact he had as an African-American scientist, uh, an agronomist uh, in a certain period of our history, our country's history, where there were not very many people like him. And I've looked at his life in, in many ways as, as an example uh, of what is possible when one focuses on the things that are really important. And this quote from him uh, summarizes, I hope, for our wall fellows that at different stages of life, we're all going to be in a position where we can reach out and be of help to somebody. Because uh, as you hear this quote, you'll, you'll recognize that all of us along the spectrum of life uh, go through these different positions. And how we are judged and how we leave the world will be a reflection of how we treat each other at those different stages. And this is what he said. How far you go in life depends on your being tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, sympathetic with the striving and tolerant of the weak and the strong. Because someday in your life, you will have been all of these. So tonight is a singular moment in your life. Uh, this is a recognition of, of your accomplishments here at the university. Uh, and you'll have some struggles ahead. You'll have successes, I'm sure. But how you are judged and how reviewed is how you treat other people. And that's really what I believe it kind of boils down to. So congratulations to our new inductees. Thank you all to, uh, to all of you for being here. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize one of my 17 bosses, and that's Jason Repack, <laughs> uh, member of our board of trustees. I think, Jason, you're the only trustee here. Is that correct? So I am grateful for the support that we get from our trustees and appreciate your being here tonight. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you, President Benson. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Erica Small, Dean of the E. Craig Wall Senior College of Business Administration to the stage. It's a little shorter. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Raleigh, thank you, Nick. So I also would like to welcome the Wall Fellows students, particularly the inductees and their guests, President Benson, Provost Dennis, Dean Bornholt, Wall Fellows Director Jay Page, board members, alumni, faculty, staff, and other distinguished guests, welcome to our event tonight. So this event is always a very impressive one, as you can see. Uh, even on the heels of a hurricane, we can pull this off. It's, it's pretty amazing. But it uh, doesn't happen without a great deal of work. So uh, I would like to take just a minute to thank those who are involved. So in addition to the incredible Wall Fellows themselves, who devote a great deal of time, effort, and energy to planning this event tonight, down to the amazing centerpieces you see in front of you, I also want to recognize Miss Peggy Fanny, who joined us only recently in the Wall College. Uh, and she's embarrassed now because I've called her out. But in very short order, she's got uh, acclimated to uh, this process and helped us put on a lovely event. And also the fantastic Aramark staff who have prepared a delicious meal for us that we're about to enjoy. And I want to recognize the parents and other family members joining us tonight. So last year, my own mom uh, was able to join me at this event. This year, she's home with my kids, so I can be here with you. She also hemmed my pants. So I didn't trip, trip on them coming up here. So my point is uh, that your families, both given and chosen, are such an important support system for you. They will help you years on from now uh, when you're in need and celebrate your milestones with you. And they will be proud of you even decades on. So class of 2024, take a moment to wave to your family and thank them, uh, those folks who came to support you today. Very good. 
So there's a certain pressure when you're up here and asked to speak before dinner as opposed to afterwards. So I'll try to keep my remarks brief. Um, but my theme is a little bit unorthodox. I felt like it required a bit of a background. So if you'll indulge me, I want to tell you a little bit about the process, particularly following Dr. Benson and his quoting of uh, very important distinguished people. This will make sense in a minute. So each year I spend, the way that I come to this is I spend a lot of weeks just sort of mulling over. Uh, what it is I want to say to the Wall Fellows inductees uh, in this moment in the way of advice uh, or inspiration. And I reflect on the goals of the program and the qualities that you will develop in it, leadership, relationship building, communication, work ethic, commitment, character, all of those things. And I think about your unique qualities and the talents and abilities that you bring to the table and what I can possibly share with you about the journey you're beginning tonight. This year, I had a bit of a writer's block in this process. So my mind began to wander a little bit. I started to think about what I was doing when I was in your shoes. And that brings us to the 90s. So at LSU, uh, we did not have a program like the Wall Fellows program, which is unfortunate, because I happen to feel like I'd have been a good candidate. Um, but we didn't have one. So I started thinking, you know, I was on my own trying to develop the kinds of things that we hope to develop uh, in you in this program. And I thought, what, what was I doing? What was I learning and how and from where? And that's when I had my light bulb moment and I would like to share with you my top five lessons from 1990s music lyrics. Now, in defense of this, I want to say that my 20-year-old nephew and his girlfriend both contributed to this list, so I feel like um, that and the number of flannel shirts and combat boots I've seen over the, the years, I feel like this, the 90s are making a comeback, that hopefully you'll get some of these references. If you don't, maybe your parents will, and it won't be lost. And so with that prelude out of the way, I give you my top five 90s lyrical leadership lessons. And I'm going to begin in 1990 with Robert Van Winkle's classic advice. Stop, collaborate, and listen. <laughs> Indeed. Vanilla ice. Uh, it needs no explanation, does it? It's simple. It's basic. But admit it. Those of you who were around and listening to music in the 90s have more than once said this to yourself, or maybe to others, repeated it in your mind. So indeed, it is important to stop and collaborate and listen. These are skills you're going to learn, right? Communication, collaboration, that's what we hope to develop. So stop, collaborate, and listen. And that brings us to 1994, when Desiree gave us You Gotta Be, which advised in the opening lyric, Listen as your day unfolds, challenge what the future holds, try and keep your head up to the sky. Others may, they ca may cause you tears, go ahead, release your fears, stand up and be counted, don't be ashamed to cry. So ultimately, the whole song goes on to speak about uh, what others ex expect of you and how to overcome that, which is the whole point of the chorus, and bear with me. You gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser, you gotta be hard, you gotta be tough, you gotta be stronger. You gotta be cool, you gotta be calm, you gotta stay together. So this message is about confidence, right? Other people are going to have conflicting expectations of you, but you have to hold up your head and be comfortable with being who you are. So this too is a personal quality I hope you continue to develop during your time in the program and beyond. So that brings us to 1995, when Gwen Stefani, then in the band No Doubt, gave us the song The Climb, which is on their best album, I might say, which is Tragic Kingdom. And she sings, pulling myself up by a rope, I better my view. The only thing in sight is what I must do. As I turned, I could see myself falling, 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 which in return gave me strength for the climb. So clearly the lesson here is about resilience and perseverance. So none of you would be here on this stage tonight if you are not capable and smart and talented. So, but the climbing of your mountain, whatever your mountain is, in your career, in your personal life, uh, is going to have struggle in it from time to time. So I hope that this program gives you the skills and the support that you need to keep pulling yourself up and that you're not deterred by the risks that you might have to take along the way. So keep your eyes on where you're going and what you need to do to get there. All right, so 
Number four, I'm getting there. It's five, top five. Four is a weird number. Five is good. All right, but four, also in 1995, Alanis Morissette gave us a very simple, if not repetitive, reminder in her lyrics. You live, you learn. You love, you learn. You cry, you learn. You lose, you learn. You bleed, you learn. You scream, you learn. You grieve, you learn. You choke, you learn. You laugh, you learn. You choose, you learn. You pray, you learn. You ask, you learn. You live, you learn. This one's fairly self-explanatory, I think. Uh, every day, every experience, even the unpleasant ones, perhaps especially the unpleasant ones, is an opportunity for you to learn something about yourself, about others, about your environment, but you have to be open to doing so. So I hope you will be. And finally, I conclude in 1997 with Green Day's Good Riddance, Time of Your Life, which begins, another turning point, a fork stuck in the road, time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. Classic life transition song played at many a graduation from 1997 onward. Uh, but my point is you have an opportunity in this Wall Fellows program that, to create lifelong friendships and memories. And for many in this room, I think the experiences of the Wall Fellows program affected the trajectory of their lives and their careers. It's hard. It will challenge you. It will test you. Make the absolute best of it. So not a typical approach to my Wall Fellows induction speech, a bit tongue in cheek. Uh, but ultimately, my message is this, that the Wall Fellows program, as Dr. Benson said, is a unique opportunity. You were selected because of your talents and your potential, and you should be very proud of that, as we are of you. But your acceptance into this program is not the culmination or the reward for your talents. It's the commencement of their development. Through the vision and the generosity of the Wall Fellow family, or the Wall family, and the continued support of a committed advisory board, faculty, alumni, and donors, the Wall Fellows program will offer you extraordinary experiences that you would not have otherwise had. Opportunities that most people, myself included, did not have, will not have. So the Wall Fellows Program sees a great deal of potential in you, and each of these opportunities you are offered is an investment in the development of your leadership and your character. So I ask that as you have these experiences, you focus with purpose and with intention on the talents that you want to develop in each opportunity. In a moment, you'll take a pledge affirming your commitment to the values of the Wall Fellows Program, character, competence, leadership, contribution, these are ideals that you will continue to develop and work toward throughout your life. You'll be challenged, as we all are, to uphold them. And as you experience these opportunities over the next two years, remember to pause and reflect on what you've learned and how your talents have grown, and they undoubtedly will. And with that, let's induct. Will the Wall Fellows Class of 2024 please stand? The Wall Fellows Program was founded to help students define in real world terms their dreams and aspirations. A program that would assemble in a new way the resources and tools that help students achieve those dreams and aspirations. A program that would have at its heart the core values, character, competence, leadership, contribution. A program which was radical in its simplicity because it would focus, as E. Craig Wall Jr. said, on training a student not for their first job, but for their last job. A program that would focus not only on the results students might achieve in their lives, but also in the process by which those results were obtained. And tonight we are gathered here to honor the accomplishment of eight students who have accepted the challenge represented by the goals and ideals of the Wall Fellows Program. Now, you can turn and face me, so it says. As you do this, I charge you to be aware that by committing your name to the Wall Fellows Creed, as well as the Code of Conduct, you not only become a part of the tradition that stretches back to the founding of this university, but that you pledge and affirm that you will personally embrace the ideals upon which this tradition was built. You will pledge and affirm that in matters of conduct, it will be character, not expediency of profit, which will be your determining guideline. You will pledge and affirm that there is no acceptable standard of performance for a Wall Fellow other than complete competence. You will pledge and affirm that leadership is a responsibility, not a job requirement or a tool for success. You will pledge and affirm that the relationships with those around you have intrinsic value, 
a value which you will hold and trust and not use for your personal advancement or commercial exploitation. You will pledge and affirm that making a contribution to your family, your community, your business, your colleagues, and to those less fortunate than yourself is not an option, but a requirement of the life you choose to lead. And finally, you will commit that above all, honor will guide your course of career and life. We state these goals and ideals aloud so that you may hear them and so that all assembled may hear and share in them. Having heard this, I will ask you in the presence of the president, the faculty and the company assembled, is it your pledge and affirmation to fully embrace the ideals of the Wall Fellows? Yes. Is it your intention to become a member of that body to pursue your career in keeping with the goals and ideals of the Wall Fellows as stated in the creed just read aloud? Then on the recommendation of the Wall Fellows faculty and the acceptance of the Board of the Wall Fellows program, you are each invited to formally jo join the Wall Fellows as members of the class of 2024. We can applause. And now Raleigh Cook and Nicholas Urbanic will join us to introduce the Wall Fellows as they sign their names. Thank you, Dean Small. As your name is called, we invite each of you to step forward, enroll your signature in the continuing register of the Wall Fellows, and receive congratulations from Dean Small. There we go. James Glenn Denning is an economics and supply chain management major from Wilmington, North Carolina. This past summer, he interned at PPD, which is a part of Thermo Fisher Scientific. He is also a degree in three student. Olivia Gordon. Olivia Gordon is a management and marketing major. She is from Louisville, Kentucky, and this past summer, she interned at American Eagle Outfitters as a management intern. Christian Livingston is a communications major with a concentration in communication studies. She also has creative writing and photography double minor. She is from Columbia, South Carolina, and this summer she interned at the AMP agency through the BLAC internship program. On campus, she is involved in her campus, presidential ambassadors, and she is also a member of the HTC Honors College. Logan Miller. Logan Miller is an economics major with a psychology minor. He is from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and this past summer he interned at the Daily Dirt Nap. Logan is the president of both the Coastal Chess Club as well as the Economics Club. Logan Nirad is a finance major from Charlotte, North Carolina. This past summer, he interned with the Kiowa Island Golf Resorts. On campus, he is a member of Phi Gamma Delta Fraternity. Eris Pingu. Eris Pingu is an accounting major from Pogradet, Albania. He interned with CCU Financial Services this summer and is currently interning with the Burroughs and Chapin Foundation. On campus, he is the treasurer of the CCU Chess Club and also a member of Beta Alpha Psi. Gavin Reeder is a finance major with an international business minor. He is from Charlotte, North Carolina, and this summer he interned at Site Tech Systems, LLC. Elliot 
Eleanor Wolski. Eleanor is a sustainability and communications major from Knoxville, Tennessee. She is a member of the CCU track and field team, HCC Honors College, Presidential Ambassadors, and the Coastal Greenhouse Work Study Program. She is also a board member of the CCU Love Blue and treasurer of the Sprout Club. And now, please join us in a final round of applause for the Wall Fellows Class of 2024. Thank you. Now, two of our Wall Fellows will be sharing their experiences about what this program has meant to each of them. At this time, I would like to invite to the stage Nate Cook, Wall Fellows Class of 2023. Thank you, Raleigh. And thank you all for joining us this fine evening as we honor the achievements of these hardworking individuals who are now known as the Class of 2024 of the Wall Fellows Program. The Wall Fellows Program has given me the opportunity to meet and interact with these amazing individuals I can now call my lifelong friends. It has boosted my confidence, communication skills, leadership skills, and above all, my listening skills. During my time in this program, I have experienced a unique Icelandic culture, toured the South Carolina Ports Authority, met countless business professionals, and a cultural trip to San Francisco is just around the corner. When you become a Wall Fellow, you are instantly seen differently. Your reputation also changes. You are known as a Wall Fellow, which means you dress differently and have set higher standards for yourself. Dan Pena says, show me your friends and I will show you your future. By being in the program, you're surrounding yourself with high achieving individuals who see a future for themselves. On this stage tonight, we have juniors in college who have already made a big decision in their life to pursue a college degree. In the audience, we have people of a wide variety of ages that have made some of life's biggest decisions, such as having a child, getting married, or starting a new job. There's a common theme about these decisions. They involve family and friends. Quote, today is the result of our past actions, and tomorrow is the result of our present actions. Either you cry to remember your past, or you make your past historic and memorable. Choice is yours. Rajwani Kumar. The decision to attend Coastal Carolina University was one of the biggest decisions I've had to make in my life. I knew I was going to be leaving behind my family, my friends, and the place where I felt most comfortable. I was very homesick at the beginning of my freshman year and started to reconsider the decision to come to a school that was over a thousand miles away from home. I didn't know at the time, but I was meeting some of the people I would interact with almost every day for the next three years. Then in the spring, as we all know, the COVID pandemic started in 2020. It was during this time that I truly considered transferring from Coastal Carolina. Again, I miss my friends, I miss my family, and I miss playing on a golf team. In August of 2020, my family and I went to visit a Division II school in Detroit, Michigan called Wayne State University. Now, shortly after this visit, I received an email from one of my professors here, Mark Mitchell at Coastal Carolina University. He noticed I entered the transfer portal and decided to reach out. In his email, he stated, you are the type of student who excels in a business school, bright, confident, well-prepared. We'll miss you here, but we want what's best for you and your family. I cannot thank Professor Mitchell enough for his kind words and thoughtful email. I never knew an email could have such an important influence in my decision-making process. Standing before you today, I know I made the right decision to stay here. I never would have met these amazing people and would never have created all the memories that we've made together and will create in the future. From playing chess with Nick in a local Icelandic bar to presenting a consulting project to Star OD with Maeve. No one can take those memories away. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the decisions we make and the people we meet along the way. Juniors, 
Congratulations on this monumental step in your careers. Seniors, thank you all so much for being the people you are. As Elvis Presley once said, do something worth remembering. Thank you all for joining us and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce my classmate, Abby Vo, Wellfellows class of 2023. Thank you, Nate. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank those who made this induction ceremony possible and to all of you here who came to celebrate the Walfels class of 2024. We all know that college is preparing us for our futures, and that is what this program is about. As E. Craig Wall Jr. said, our role is to prepare students, not for their first job, but for their last. I am an adoptee from District 4 in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. On Christmas Day in 2000, I came to my new home in America to the most wonderful family I could ever hope for. I knew growing up I had such an amazing family, support system, and many opportunities. I was raised in TUK, South Carolina, went through elementary school, middle school, high school, decided on Coastal Carolina as my college of choice, and made it to my first year experience class where I discovered the Walfos program and decided to explore and learn more. I and the rest of the seniors are going on year two of the program, and we now know that this program is one that will benefit us in many ways. This past summer, I had the privilege of working at the Juliet Park District in Illinois planning the Taste of Juliet Music Festival. Part of my experience included event planning, structuring stage production, and working with outside vendors. I also took great pride in learning how to organize and manage the daily routines for the artists and bands. The founders and those who have been an integral part of the program know it is an opportunity of a lifetime. Class of 24, it is your time to decide whether you want to be a part of this program, let it pass you by, or grab it and run with it. The Walfos program will help guide you in your path to success, but ultimately, it is up to you. You choose the legacy you leave behind. You choose how you will be remembered. At this time, I would like to give you a few pieces of advice. Number one, stay in contact with each other and with the people in this program and our alums. We have different forms of communications and ways to stay in contact. My second piece of advice, stay curious. Even though you might face adversity, you can never go wrong by asking questions. The more curious you are, the more you will learn and become wiser. Remember, curiosity may have killed the cat, but satisfaction brought him back. Third, reflect often. Think about how you got this far, and not just through the rigorous process we put you through via long application and three interviews, but about the choices and sacrifice you have, sacrifices you have made to be here and why you are here. The fourth piece of advice I have for you is to embrace others' stories. Use them not only in this program, but in your daily life. My last piece of advice is to take full advantage of every opportunity given to you. You are about to embark on an adventure that will forever change your history and for the better. Class of 24, this is your journey. You got this. It's time to dig your heels in and blaze your path to success. Congratulations. I would now like to welcome to the stage the director of the Walfos program, Jay Page. I would like to thank President Benson for, for your speech and, and great quotes. 
Dean Small, you've inspired me for next year. So I would say stay tuned for next year. It's going to be all about 80s Hair Nation and the leadership songs that come out of that genre, because that's my genre. So Bon Jovi and Def Leppard, I'll be studying closely over the next few weeks to, to come up with great inspirational quotes from that. That was such a moving speech. Thank you. And Abby and Nate, uh, again, to, to follow you and the stories that you have is, is incredible. And just so excited to see you all grow. I've kind of got the easy part. Most of mine is scripted. But like I said, next year I'm, I'm going to go out of the box. And Dean Small, you definitely inspired me. Uh, I do want to add just a little bit to the juniors, though. Juniors, I've had the chance to watch you grow. From the reception in March where you were very timid and, and very, you know, uh, nervous and, and got to see you present in March to one of the largest companies in the world, Kroger, now an under $190 billion company. And I do want you to, to know you're already well on your way to becoming who you want to be. I want to kind of build upon Nate's a little bit about talking about decisions. And I want to leave you with a quote from Michelle Obama. Don't ever make decisions based on fear. Make decisions based on hope and possibility. Make decisions based on what should happen, not what shouldn't. And I do want to say a little bit for the seniors as well. I view this not as a celebration as well. Senior fall wall fellows. Without you embracing the cultural shifts in the program, we would not have accomplished nearly as much as we have. I came here to move mountains, and you've helped me push them. Thank you. If you're on the Wallfellows Board of Advisors, please stand. I'd like to recognize you, Wallfellow Board of Advisors. You're, you're, your time and talent you invest in this program and your financial support are greatly appreciated. Thank you for all you do for me, for Mr. Spears uh, and Sunoco to Mr. Klaus leading our great uh, conversations about how to build effective teams, to Teo and, and he and I uh, looking at building a European trip for the fellows. And I kind of left Dan Adams for last on purpose. Uh, Dan has uh, been a great voice for me and uh, has really helped guide me over the last year. And Dan, thank you so much for that. And, uh, Eric didn't stand, but I see him back in the back back there. So, Eric, thank you for being part of our board as well. So, uh, And before I forget, and I don't have it in my speech, tomorrow uh, we are going to have a pre-gamers event. Please come by our, our, our space. Pre-gamers is a business that Eric owns, and we're going to have some hot dogs on the grill and some space over there, and we hope to see you all over there. To the college administration and faculty and staff, Provost Dennis, I really enjoyed our time in Iceland together. Thank you so much for coming over. I know it meant a lot to us and the fellows to have you going on our special day that we do every year and uh, participating in our uh, taste of Icelandic foods and everything that we did during that journey. Thank you so much. Uh, but I really thank you for your support and your encouragement as we move this program to new heights. I think it's also incredibly important, and I see a lot of faces in the room that I've got to know really well over the year, and that's our Wallfellow alumni. I remind our current class, you're becoming part of a family. The Wallfellow alumni really are incredibly supportive of this program. They've helped me grow and understand the history and the legacy of the program and what it truly means to be a Wallfellow. So uh, they have actively supported the program through board participation, class presentations, mentoring, internship connections, and financial contributions. I would like for each of the Wallfellow alums to stand as I read your name, and please hold the applause until we end. We have 20 Wallfellow alums here tonight, and that really just is tremendous. Start out with Eric Kimbley, class of 2004. Jason Repack, class of 2007. Kaylee Hope, class of 2018. Trevor Green, class of 2019. Morgan Howder, class of 2019. Kylie Decker, class of 2020. Zach Gardner, class of 2020. Charles Gray, class of 2020. Morgan Goodell Scott, class of 2020. Lucia Zatz, class of 2020. Austin Johnson, class of 2020. And I always call Sam, Sam the man. Sam has been a, a voice also from a recent Wall Fellow and really helped me uh, again, learn about the program. Him and Lucia have been there for me almost from day one. So I always call Sam Defu or Sam the man, class of 2021. Arianna Monroe, class of 2021. And then before I announce the class of 2022, you know, they were my, my first uh, class that I had a chance to lead. And I know we had some struggles our first semester, but I think the second semester we really blew it away. And the majority of them that I'll introduce tonight got to experience our Iceland trip as well, got to know them more, 
and I can't thank them enough for being here tonight. So we have Haley Salisbury, class of 2022, Lily Schaefer, class of 2022, Olivia Stringfield, class of 2022. And if you were here last year, you don't need to box the Kleenexes tonight, but if you remember Tamari White's speech from last year, there was not a dry in the place. So Tamari, thank you for coming tonight. And Ebony Wingate, and we're very fortunate that we still get to see Ebony Wingate in our halls in the Wall College of Business as she pursues her masters, but thank you for coming tonight as well. So I'd like to take the time to thank you all and a great big applause for all our Wallfellow alums and all you do for the program. <laughs> a couple things that, that, are, that are scripted that I, that I want to make sure we talk about is a little bit about some highlights from the last year and what the fellows have been up to. Over the past year, the Wall, of, Wall Fellows have led three community service projects in addition to a wide variety of internal Wall Fellow projects, including planning, organizing, and executing the ceremony tonight. The program has hosted a variety of guest speakers, including executives from Tide Cleaners, Meta, and Kroger, as well as board members and Wall Fellow alum. The Wall Fellows have traveled to Austin, Texas, Charleston, Charlotte, Cincinnati, Columbia, New York City, and the country of Iceland. They have toured headquarters of many companies, including Sunoco, Bloomberg, Kroger, Procter & Gamble, Energy Capital Partners, the Supreme Court of South Carolina, the Cincinnati Reds, the South Carolina Ports Authority, and Aero Capital Solutions, amongst others. The Wall Fellows have completed 15 internships, and you had a chance to hear a lot of what the juniors have been up to with their internships. We thank Trevor Green and Site Tech for their support of the program. We've also had Wall Fellows intern at Thermal Fisher, First Citizens Bank, Coastal Carolina University Financial Services, Golf Society 319, and Litchfield Properties, among others. We've had Wall Fellows recently placed at Scott's Miracle Grow and Kimberly Clark. In addition to many of our last year's class are going on to pursue higher education. We have several going in after their masters, and we have one pursuing a career in law. The Wall Fellows have involved, been involved in many campus events and have led many student organizations on campus. We now have 187 Wall Fellow alums. And as we've talked about a lot tonight, a common theme, there's just no program like this in the nation. We're up to 187 of you who are pursuing their careers and contributing their communities in a far better way. Without the experience and the growth of this program, they wouldn't be where they are. I've gotten to know all of you who are here this evening, and I want to thank you for all you have done for me in this program. Our world needs more and more leaders like these. Through this program, these students truly grow into themselves and I am so grateful and so honored to have the opportunity to lead this program and see the growth in these young leaders. It is my motivation and what drives me relentlessly every day. How can you make a difference? A program such as this needs support in a variety of ways. As the program is funded through endowments and contributions, the community and growth of the program depend upon the support and contributions of those who have a passion for helping our future generation of leaders with the values we have shared. If you would like to support our leadership retreat, we recently renamed our student support endowment in honor of our previous director, Gina Cummings, and from some her endowment, will go to enhance future leadership retreats. I have one last quote to leave you with before I give the ultimate thank you to the team that put this together tonight, but I want to leave you with one last thought. One person in pursuit of excellence raises the standards of everyone around them. As they strive for greatness, they bring out the greatness in others. Be that one person today. And as I mentioned, I would like to recognize those tonight, and I know Dean Small did, and it, it, it bears repeating those that made this moment possible. The induction was organized by the senior class of 2023, the project being managed by Chief of Staff Raleigh Cook, who was assisted by fellow seniors Abby Vo, Nicholas Urbanic, Laura Bomley, and Mae Brady. So thank you seniors for all that you've done uh, to set this great event up tonight. And also Peggy Fanny, and I know the Dean has already embarrassed Peggy, but without Peggy this night would not be possible. Sean Seezy and her team, Aramark, Wendy Lee, the, the special events team and everybody else who played a role. At this time, it's time for dinner. So thank you again for joining us and have a great evening.